Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice. And you know what? We got Metal Voices on today. We got John Bush and, of course, my co host, the other Metal Voice, Neil Turbin. What is going on, John? What's up, Jimmy? Hey, new album, Punching the Sky. It's going to be released October 23rd on Metal Blade Records. Uh, and there was a single that was released, End of the Attention Span. Yes, uh, congratulations, John, on the new release, Hi, Punching the Sky. How you doing? What's and up, buddy? Great, great meeting you there in the, at the DO Awards Gala back in, um, you know, it was months, a number of months back, but it's so cool to, to have that chance. Pre-quarantine. Yes. <laughs> We remember those days. And um, so the big surprise is uh, the album release party that's going to be live streaming. You want to tell us a bit about that? That's coming up next month. I do. It's uh, October 10th, and it's going to be from the famous Whiskey A Go Go here in Hollywood. We've done many shows there, and I've been to many shows there. It's a great venue. Um, we're trying to actually keep live venues alive in this uncertain time. Uh, so they've hooked up a, a way to live stream shows a bunch of people have done it prior to us and and uh which is good because they probably got the bugs out which is a good thing because it's usually armored saints kind of luck that we'd be the first uh group to do it and then haywire would you know uh, break out and, and, we'd, and, <laughs> and nothing would work but it's not the case we should be probably about the 10th show or so where they've they've got it done so we should uh, have all the bugs worked out but it should be fun uh, to get tickets, you go to armoredsaint.veeps, that is V-E-E-P-S dot com. Let me repeat that, armoredsaint.veeps, V-E-E-P-S dot com. And then you can get just a ticket to the show, which is like 10 bucks, or you can get um, a bundle package, which is cool. Metal Blade's doing some really fun stuff where you can get a t-shirt in association with the show, or you can get the record, most importantly, so you can get the ticket the t-shirt the record or you can just get the look at this look at this john look at this john what am i wearing here look at this you're look wearing at this. A <laughs> classic <laughs> armored saint t-shirt with the uh the famous or uh, iconic logo yep. yeah but it should be fun and i think there was some confusion early on about whether or not if some, maybe some people thought it was a local gig and of course it is for us a local gig i live like maybe 10 minutes from the whiskey however you can watch this Everywhere on the earth that you have uh, good Wi-Fi and internet, which I didn't have earlier, Jimmy, as I was driving. <laughs> and um, uh, you, so you could be in, you know, Montreal, or you can be in, you know, Helsinki, Finland, or, you know, uh, Lima, Peru, or, you know, Antarctica, if you have Wi-Fi there. Just internationally, you can see it. So. All right. You know what? I've seen, I've seen, I think, uh, Voivod, and I've seen Anvil, and, and, I'm not sure what the setup is like there, but I got to tell you, from those two live stream paid, and Jeff Tate too, excellent, excellent. And, and you know what? Oh. People are bumping around in there on their computers and houses and drinking beers and having parties. Highly recommend so far what I've seen in terms of paid live streams. Great. I, you know, I, my only concern is it's going to be odd playing in front of nobody. So um, that is know, the challenge. Be, it'll, it'll be a little bit like a, uh, you know, a, a glorified rehearsal. Um, you're playing to the cameras. You know people are in the cameras watching, of course. But um, and, you know, I, I'll, I'll probably have a little sense of humor to go with it just because uh, it'll be uh, unusual when it comes to normal rock gigs. But uh, we're looking forward to it. When you make a new record, as, as anyone knows, you want to play songs live. That's what you want to do because you're excited about your new material. And we will be playing about four new songs as well as some deep tracks. And it should be fun. And we're looking forward to it. And after yeah. that, I don't know. That's our one and only gig, 2021. Yeah, you want to ask some questions about the new album, maybe? Yes, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to ask about you know the song. Well, first of all, the package that you're going to be offering through Metal Blade or or other you know distribution channels globally. Just wanted to ask you know what kind of a in other words is it, is it just a straight CD or you have you know uh, is it going to be on vinyl? Is there different uh, ver you know different types of uh, packages that people can look forward to? Yeah, Metal Blade, they they do such an incredible job with different um, options to uh, uh, things to purchase. They have all these different colored vinyl 
uh, LPs, uh, obviously the CD booklet, uh, digi packs. Um, they do a great job. They really make it exciting for people to really want to purchase, you know, the record or CD, and instead of just you know, live stream. I mean, uh, streaming it or or you know, hearing it on YouTube or the uh, I mean Spotify or whatever the means are these days, or or, or getting it on iTunes, whatever. You know, I mean, I want people to, I want people to get the record. They, I want them to hear it in its entirety as, as records and rock, uh, heavy metal records in particular should be listened to. Um, you know, everybody's different how they get music these days. And I understand, but when you make a record, you really, the objective is to hear it in its entirety. That's, that's how we intended people to hear it. And um, so by giving these cool packages that Metal Blade does, I think it gives extra incentive. And let's face it, the metal community is probably the one world where people still want to hear records right. in its entirety. Yeah. And they want the packages because they like the way the artwork is. And I do too. I mean, I still love vinyl. And, you know, I, I, that's how I want to look at, at records and listen to records. And um, I think that's how it should be done. So, um, right. and again, Metal Blade gives you a, a very good motivation to do it properly because they make some cool stuff. What about, okay. It's been a few years since your last album. What's the musical direction? Are we changing it up here? Are we going death metal? Are we going typical, traditional heavy metal? Are we going rap? What are we doing here? It's, it's, it's going to be a cross between a little death metal, a little rap, <laughs> a little coffee house music, a little singer-songwriter uh, with a little bluegrass. Okay. Now, you think you guys can keep up? Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You think the so, Armored Saint fan is that deep to go, to go along with us? Um, What's it going to sound yeah. like? You know what? It sounds like Armored Saint progressing with every record. You know, I always say that the previous record sets up the next record. And When Hands Down, which we thought was a great album, um, I think it kind of sets up this record. Uh, it's a stepping stone. So I really believe uh, it's a step in you know, progressing as writers, singers, musicians. Um, you always want to look back on your on your on your uh, history, because, you know, we have a lot of history. Armored Saints started in 1983. So um, I think it's important to to look back, but you also want to look forward. And so, you know, I think it all, it, it, it encompasses all the origins of what Saint started as and how we, uh, we, we formed as far as being a cool hard rock, heavy metal band, and then making record, uh, a record these days that sounds like it came out in 2020. I think that's imperative. Um, you know, I, I, I love the 80s. Uh, I really do. I cherish them. But we're not in the 80s. You know, this is yeah. 2020. We're not even in the, no, we're not not even, even the we're not even, decade that's of right. 2000. So yep. uh, we're in the second decade now, which is really cool. I'll give you a little uh, a tidbit of info. We're in the 20s. Armored Saint, Armored Saint has made a record in five different decades now. We made one in the 80s, 90s, 2000, mm -hmm. 2010s. And now in the 20s. So I think that's a pretty awesome accomplishment. But um, especially for a band that was was not a band for about eight years. So um, that being said, I think it's it's a it's a great combination of feeling old school in the sense that that's where we started, but sounding like a record that came out now. All right. How's this? In 10 seconds, we're not going to get into every lyric and every song and the meaning. Just give us a little quick 10 second overview of what the song's about the lyric of the song. And I'll, well, I'll shoot off one, and then Neil will shoot off one. Missile to gun. Missile to gun is a little bit about uh, the divisiveness that's going on in the country and trying to settle it perhaps with like a beer and maybe a little little fight and then, you know, going back and having a beer with this person that you disagree with. That's kind of like the gist of it, saying, hey, we could probably get along and don't have that much of a difference of opinion if we really think about it. Go ahead, Neil. End of the, end of the attention span. And then the attention span plays on the, uh, you know, the pros and cons of the digital world. There are pros. We wouldn't be doing this 30 years ago, which is pretty amazing. Um, at the same time, the attention span, that my wife would say, even from somebody like me, is terrible courtesy of all these devices. And I am concerned about the future generations in particular my kids because they're being brought up with it so i'm sorry can that. you repeat that i didn't get that sorry yeah, exactly <laughs> you had no attention span no um you know i think the pros and cons but i mean i'm not just only negative of course i like to bust a little chops when i can i'm always poking fun at society and and the way we are but i'm just as bad 
So I'm not saying you guys, I'm saying us guys, but uh, it is a little concerning about how this kind of, you know, affects us and our attention. You know, my wife is like, we're talking about something and here I am texting my friend, John. Hey, John, John, I'm talking to you. Anyway. No, I get that too. My wife tells me I don't pay attention to her. Um, Bubble, Mr. Remember Mr. Bubbles? Remember Mr. Bubble love, and the guy was floating love Mr. around? Bubbles. Love Mr. That's what it's all about, Mr. Bubbles. <laughs> uh, uh, that song is, is cool because, um, you know, obviously that term's been thrown around a lot uh, as we've entered this weird COVID phase. Of course, the song was written about a year, year and a half back. So it was pre-COVID. Um, but it seems to work, really identify with what's happening now. And the basic premise of that song is kind of be careful what you wish for because what you get, you may not want anymore. That's the kind of gist of it. But like, uh, it could it could be um, relating to perhaps um, getting into a certain group of people and then realizing, wow, I don't think I really want to be in this group of people and, and now I got to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Neil, throw it out there, Neil. So I have a quick, a quick question, John, because I know the time's limited. I wanted to ask uh, two, two questions, but I'll just kind of combine them into one. It's about the sound of Armored Saint and how it's changed uh, or how it, how it may, may have changed or may not, you know, and that's really something that you can tell us. But, you know, obviously, uh, you know, very sad that Dave Pritchett, Pritchett, Pritchard left us back in the 80s, late 80s. But, um, you know, I know he was a big contributor to Armored Saint in, in terms of the sound and just wondered, you know, that's one point of, of the, you know, how, how the sound would be different today if he was still with you guys. And also uh, from the, the last couple of albums, um, La Raza, Wind Hands Down, of course, the live album, but the, the studio albums and the new one, Punching, the, you know, Punching the Sky, um, Punching for the Sky. I guess I need no, some more Punching the Sky. Now. You're good. <laughs> punching but, the Sky. Um, I, I was just wondering, you know, in, in respect to those, to the different albums that you guys have released and, you know, obviously the last few, um, how, how the sound has maybe changed a little bit in the direction that your guys are going in. And also, um, you know, in terms of... it's a lot of questions there, Neil. The, the exper- <laughs> I know. I'm losing track here. But he can answer the question. So in terms of your experience in Anthrax, because you've been in Anthrax, what, 12 years or more? Okay. Uh, almost 13, actually. I mean, yeah. around 13. So, I mean, that's got to have some sort of an impact, at least on you. I mean, maybe the band, but just in terms of your experiences. And maybe you could share a little bit about that. I just wanted to put that all together so you can talk about that. Right, and not yeah, answer sure. the questions. Um, well, in, uh, Dave is, you know, he was, uh, he lost his life way too soon. He was an amazing person and a musician. And uh, we miss him. We miss him daily, actually, because he was just such a, contributing force to Armored Saint and, and, and just our friendship, really. Um, it's weird. Like, things will be played by the guitar players or something Joey will create or they'll they'll play off the cuff live, and it sounds like Dave. And I'll be like, whoa, that sounds like something Dave would have played. Um, so I kind of really feel like he's always kind of with us um, in some weird way. Maybe it's a subliminal thing that he just kind of finds his way. He's like kind of poking around going here I am you put you wrote that idea but it really sounds like something I did um which is really amazing so I'm sure maybe there's a conscious thought with Joey doing it or maybe not maybe stuff just kind of rolls out of us and it's and it's just Dave and maybe it's because he was such a big part of the Armored Saint uh sound and 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 vibe for all those years so I, w- I wish he was still present I can, who knows what would be the case with the band if he was. I think we'd have three guitar players, you know, go for the Outlaws, kind of, you know, Iron Maiden trip. But, um, you know, like I said, his, his spirit is kind of always there. It's always there, um, which is a great thing. Um, in terms of, you know, sound and how it relates to, you know, Anthrax and, um, uh, I mean, my years in Anthrax, um, you know, playing with different musicians is always a big plus um, because, you know, you know, you don't want to only be limited to the people that you're with as much as we love each other in Armored Saint, and we do uh, for the most part. Um, you know, it's always nice to to play with different people, to be able to play with people like Charlie Benante and Scotty. And, you know, these guys are so talented. Frankie Bello, you know, it, it, it was always just an eye-opening circumstance to to play with different people and get their different perspectives on music and and these are things that I think, you know, I, I feel this now by even being 
doing the thing I did with Metal Legions, which uh, was with, you know, Mike Portnoy and, and Dave Ellison and, uh, you know, Alex Skolnick and Andreas from Sepultura. You know, these guys are just so talented. Anytime you play with these different people, it just brings out something else in you. So I think that's a, a, a big plus. And probably being an anthrax, uh, maybe at least me personally, it just kind of maybe uh, enhanced a different perspective on writing and creating. Um, it probably is the same case for Joey and, and being in Fate's Warning for all those years because Joey's played with those guys for years and those guys are so talented too, Jim Matteo. So it, you know, it helps you. And I think if you look at it peripherally, it'll kind of, and you kind of bring it back to yourself, it'll help you with your own thing. Um, the thing about saying is, you know, I love metal, let it be known, but you know, I don't want to be limited as a musician and as a writer to be, to only say, ah, is this metal? Eh, maybe not. Let's not do it. Um, you know, I'm not going to try to convince the people that we're going to make our coffee house blue grass record. Cause I don't want to do that. And that's not proper for saying, of course, but, at the same time, if you can bring in a different instrument, like we brought in some, um, some, the pipe intro uh, of, of uh, the, the album, Standing on the Shoulders of Giants, or, you know, Gonzo played this American uh, flute, you know, it's, uh, it just enhances little things, the little keyboards. We had Dizzy Reed play uh, some parts on a couple songs. Oh, yes, yeah, really so I forgot cool. to mention that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, it, all those little things just kind of add to the songs. So when you have that kind of mindset, even Joey played some guitar parts that to me, I still to this day sounds like keyboards. And he goes, no, it's a guitar. And uh, it's like doing those kind of things just broadens the sound, it enhances the band, and, um, and you take some chances. And I love doing that. And I want us to do that. And I think it just makes the songs better. It makes the music a little more timeless. And I think, you know, don't get me wrong. I love a song that's just guitar, bass, drums, boom, full throttle. And that's great too. But if you bring it all together, it creates some depth. And I think that's something that we're really looking to do. All right, here's the last two questions. I know last yeah. time I spoke to you in Montreal, uh, you're talking about doing some shows, you know, anthrax only sort of your era, which are, it's phenomenal. It's just grown over the years. People love this stuff. I mean, any, look, there's no shows, but were there any plans to continue doing that or? You know, I, I mean, I, I, the first time I talked to uh, my booking agent about it, which is probably several years ago now, um, you know, we talked about it and, and I think he, he sniffed around for some feelers to see what, what people would think. And, and, and I don't think we got what the response that we really wanted to. It wasn't like we were looking for you know, millions of dollars or anything, but yeah. we wanted to make it worthwhile to do it and do the proper shows. It's not like something I want to go out and do like, you know, six months of touring with. It'd be fun to do some sporadic shows. I'd have to put a band together to do it. I'm probably a little lazy about that, quite honestly. Um, but, um, you know, that, that's what would be involved in doing it. And um, I don't think we were pleased enough with the response that we, we try to push it ahead and make it happen. Uh, now, Scott had said something recently, which caught me by surprise, is he said something about doing maybe some shows with not only me and Joey, but also Neil. Was your, yes, we spoke about that. Yeah, which yeah. I was like, wow, okay. And I thought, that's a great idea. That would be really cool. Uh, yeah, I think that would be a, an amazing thing for the fan base. But what I keep saying is that Joey Belladonna is the singer of Anthrax. That's fair. And Joey should be the singer of Anthrax, as far as I'm concerned. And if this happens, it needs to have his approval, really, quite honestly. Yeah, um, that's because, fair. Because, you know, I, I wouldn't want him to feel like, well, this is not my idea, and I don't want to do this, um, because he's the singer who'd be sharing the stage, So, um, quite honestly. So I think it would be something that Joey... Um, would have to give an endorsement to for that to happen if that's an idea. And again, I think it'd be a fun thing to do a couple of handful of shows, Bragg stuff. All right. So we have confirmation. I know Neil's already confirmed this. I know Neil's confirmed this. He said, Jimmy, if the right conditions are there, yes. And yeah, I respect the Joey thing that you said. John, we have your commitment. Yeah, as long as I mean, as long as I can commit yeah. it schedule wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but I mean, it's a good idea. You're saying it's a good idea. I think it's it'd be a fun idea. It'd be fun for the fans. Those are the kind of things that people are doing that are unusual and Halloween. Um, you know, like, Halloween did it, right? Halloween did it. Yeah, huge. And, and people huge, love it. Huge. Actually, you're yeah. right. Halloween did it. So wait, we wouldn't be the first. No, yeah. you'd be the first anthrax to do it. <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't be the first. First American band. First American, first American band. band. That's right. Uh, Michael Schenker did it. 
right? Of course, and great, it. and I love that because I love Gary Barden and and I love you know Graham Bonnet and. You know, what if Ron I was Barton. to tell you guys Joey Belladonna is waiting online? I'm going to bring him right on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> That would All right. be great. I here, love him. You know, he's a really super nice guy. He's nothing but he's always been super nice. Absolutely. No, no, no. Look, I, my, I, wife I love... I, my, my wife and his wife have developed this friendship, which is good. Kind of peculiar. But um, they talk on text a lot, so it's kind of it's kind of cute and funny. You seem like a decent guy. Joey, I met, seems like a great guy. Neil, uh, I've known him for years now. We're good friends. Great guy. So I think this would work. This would work. I think this would work. All right, let's get it together. Let's sign some contracts and let's do it. Wow, Neil, you had a, official. <laughs> Neil, you had a last question? Yeah, I wanted to ask, John, you've got, you, you and Armitage Sane have done some amazing tours and you've also, you know, played with some incredible lineups, you know, the package, uh, tour packages and so forth. I know you guys toured with UFO and Saxon and quite a number of others over the years, but, you know, more recently, uh, those bands. And I just wondered, you know, some, some memories or some highlights uh, from those tours because I mean this is something that maybe the fans don't know about and we'd like to know you know what it's like being on the road with Saxon and Biff and the and the gang and uh, huh. you know, UFO. Well, yeah I mean, well I mean probably the connection with Saxon on the last like run we did was uh, our the tour manager that we use a lot too his name's Jason Engel and he he actually was a tour manager for Saxon too and um and biff likes to bust his chops and get him to do things that are um you know you know he wants some stuff and he you know he, he asks him to get it done so and it's you know maybe not the normal it probably is the normal tour manager duties but like he you know he one time he wanted some ice cream and you know he told him <laughs> it's got to be vanilla and you know jason he can be a bit of a curmudgeon at times. We love him, but he can be. And so, you know, he was like, I got to get Biff some ice cream. And, <laughs> and Biff was on the, you know, Biff is telling him over the, 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 the phones, I got walkie talkies and stuff. And he's like, where's my ice cream? And, you know, and we're hearing it and cracking up thinking that's, that's some funny stuff here. Go get his ice cream, Jason. <laughs> Come on. And, you know, stuff like that. So, so that's like the funny thing. I mean, Saxon, are an awesome band they're super powerful and and always deliver live so it's always great to play with them and it's, it's a great you know it's, we we always set them up well when we we go on the road with them ufo same thing i mean phil mogg is a legend he, when i was started off singing in my garage to records you know he was probably the guy at, along with you know phil linnott and you know rob halford and bon Scott. those are the guys that i emulated and and try to really develop a voice by by singing to them and Phil Mogg in particular, because his range is not too difficult. He's pretty mid-range and great singer. So playing them with them, doing shows with them um, was just a treat because, you know, they're one of my favorite bands of all time. And Phil said that we have the same haircut, and um, I guess we do at this point. And he's just a great guy. He's has so much energy. And, um, you know, if he could still be doing it, it's, it's mo and same with Biff. You know, they, they've got a few years on me. You know, if they can do it, then that's motivation for me to keep doing it because they're older than I am and, and still delivering it and being amazing live. And so I think that's a lot of inspiration for, for an old guy like me, but not as old. So this is the last question, your favorite, and you have a quick, 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 quick answer. Your favorite fistful of metal song that you sang when you were in Anthrax? Ha, uh, well, probably Death Rider. I mean, that's a rad song, you know, it's powerful and heavy. And, um, you know, I think, I think that one would be, you know, the, the song I would choose. My favorite song from Anthrax in your era would have to be Only. I think Only is like a brutally, just all around amazing track. Neil? How about great live song too. Crowd response was always enormous with that one. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah a, great, a great hook. I mean, obviously it stays in your head and that's what a song, great song's all about. You know, what you can- No doubt. No doubt. You know, the next yeah. But We've Come For Your All, it's actually my favorite uh, John Bush era Anthrax. That album is rock solid. And I, I thought that should have been massive. It should have been, I think if it was released today, John, it would have had like an incredible, like mass reaction to it. You I, know, I mean, it could have been, in my time, it in Anthrax might have been a little ahead of its time. You know, people yeah. say that about Sound of White Noise, even they say that maybe it was, it was very uh, telling of the time and um, and it sounded very 90s you know and I say that with nothing but a big thumbs up yeah but um, it might have been a little ahead of its time who knows I don't know whatever it's 
they're all there. All the music's there. You can always listen to it. Um, you know, you could be a big fan of, of anybody who sang in Anthrax, whether that's Neil, whether that's Joey, whether it's me. I always tell people, you could pick your favorite, because people do, but it doesn't mean you don't have to like or dislike, excuse me, the other ones. You can still like them all. I love yeah. like Ronnie and I love Ozzy. You know, yeah. I love Bon and I love Brian. You know, so you can, you can, you know, I might like Bon a little more, but the reality <laughs> is you can like them both. You don't have to go, if I like him, I don't like him. That's not the way it's music. All right, on that note, Punching the Sky will be released on October 23rd on Metal Blade Records. You could pick it up in all kinds of formats, get yep. it. Uh, yeah. End of Attention Span, new single that's out. And also, don't forget, live stream anthra uh, Anthrax, Armored Saint live stream, Saturday, October 10th. It's my son's birthday. At right. Cool. PST or 4 p.m. Eastern. And go get your tickets. It's only 10 bucks. And these shows are really great. They're really picking up a lot of steam. 10 bucks all around the world. Get to see Armored Saint live. Wow. Yeah, come on. It's worth it. Come on. Don't be a cheapskate. Really 10 bucks saying, US. Come on. And we're releasing a new single. Uh, the, the first track on the record, Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. That's supposed to come out Tuesday on the 15th. I think it's 15th. Is that the 15th? Probably. I think so. And, and, um, and a new video to go along with that. So that's going to be really cool. Neil, closing remarks. Congratulations on the new album, John, and uh, thank you so much for you know spending some time with us. I'm, I know you have a busy schedule, and uh, I'm sure you have a number of interviews to do for the new release. So I've done a lot, and I have more to do. Thanks a lot. Good hanging out with you again, Neil. This yeah, is, great we're to gonna see have you to do this time. more often. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the um, the live stream. So tell us again, just so, for for all the viewers, so they can know where to go to uh, you know support Armored Sane and check out the new album. Buy it check out the, the, the um, live stream that you guys are doing. I mean, this is an awesome opportunity. Yeah, armoredsaint.veeps, V-E-E-P-S, I gotta say it slowly, dot com. armoredsaint.veeps.com, and that's where you can get the, the show. All right, it's gonna be fun. Metal Voice, John, Metal Voice, Neil Turbin, thank you so much, guys, for being on the show. Thanks, Jimmy, thank you, and thanks for uh, being understanding with my uh, circumstances yes. this morning. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem, man. Thanks, bye. Bye, guys. Bye.